All right, I think we are live and ready to go. Hello, um, I am uh, I am David Maznato. I'm a game designer and one of the organizers for Protospiel Online, and I'm super excited to be here tonight to do a tutorial on building games with Tabletop Playground. Um, Protospiel Online is a uh, online playtesting convention. Uh, we meet a couple times a year. Um, you can find out more at protospiel.online. Uh, we'll have badges going on sale uh, shortly for our April event. Um, and if you are joining this live stream from a later date, because we will be saving this and keeping it uh, as uh, available for um, for future reference, um, if you're joining us from the future, um, feel free to check out protospiel.online for uh, information on uh, future events. Um, so, Let's just like jump into it. There's like a, a ton of stuff I'm going to be covering today. Um, we are building a game in Tabletop Playground. Um, I'm specifically going to be building a game that I'm designing called Roommates. Um, and I, I decided to go with this one, even though I've already actually built this mod. Um, I am going with this one because there's a really wide variety of components that are used in it, and it feels like a really good game to kind of demo what this tool can do, and hopefully you'll see something in here that you can apply to uh, building your own game. Um, so we're going to be going all over all kinds of stuff, uh, boards, snap points, tiles, cards, card holders, uh, tokens, containers, 3D objects, multi-state objects. Uh, there's something that I'm realizing I forgot to list here, which is um, table states. We're gonna be doing like a ton of stuff. Um, so if you have to tap out at any point, pl please uh, feel free to do so and uh, make sure you kick any questions you may have um, in the uh, comments and I will try to address those as they come up, I'll probably take breaks in between uh, each sort of topic and have a look at those things. Um, so let's get the star of the show up here, um, which is Tabletop Playground. All right, so this is what you see when you first boot up uh, Tabletop Playground, which I'll from now on, I'll just refer to it as TTP. Um, it's essentially, if you're unfamiliar with this tool, it's it works pretty similarly to how things like um, uh, Tabletop Simulator or uh, Tabletop um, Tabletopia work. It's a 3D sandbox um, tool. Um, there are built-in features for Tabletop Playground. I'm actually seeing this question come up, so I'll just hit this right now. Um, Roger's asking, um, am I going to be covering the conversion of TTS games to Tabletop Playground? Um, I'm not going to be covering that on the stream. Um, I may circle back to it at the end. Um, specifically, I wanted to just go over building things basically from scratch, assuming you have the assets ready to go, um, just sort of making something, like assuming you don't have a TTS already. Um, that said, there is a converter tool that comes with Tabletop Playground that allows you to take in your uh, TTS mods and it will uh, do a little bit of conversion for you. Um, the big caveat there though, is that it, all it does is replicate the objects themselves. It isn't actually going to rebuild your mod. It's not gonna set up your table for you or anything like that. So there's still a little manual work involved. Um, if I have time at the end of this, I'll circle back and I can maybe give a quick demo on how that works. Um, but let's just jump into it. So I'm going to um, start things off for the editor, uh, or for making a game by going into the editor. Um, so we'll go in here. You can see I've already got my mod for roommates in here. So I'm going to create a new package. Um, the terminology in uh, TTS is like, you'd be making a mod, um, but they're referred to as packages in here. So anytime you see package, it's basically referring to all the files and things that make up your game. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new one. Um, and I'm going to call it, um, 
just gonna call it demo game so that I know to toss this one when I'm all set. Um, now this screen here is gonna be the kind of asset manager for your package. Um, before I go in here though, I wanna show you something really cool because one of the things I really like about this tool versus some of the others is you can do all of your asset management from within Tabletop Playground, but you can also do it using your desktop finder or um, you know file management that you have on your computer. So really quick, I'm going to um, jump to my desktop. Uh, hold please, there we go. All right, so you should be able to see my desktop now. Um, and you can see this is like, you know, I'm working on a Mac, obviously, but you can see that the path to get to where these packages are saved on your local drive, it's gonna be in library, application support, Epic, Tabletop Playground, and then Packages. Um, and from here, you can see that I've got the Roommates mod, which is the one that I've already made. And then it's created this new folder here called Demo Game. Um, and then all of these sort of built-in folders in here. I can manipulate and move and organize all of this stuff from here, which is quite a bit easier than, you know, if you imagine using the Asset Manager in Tabletop Simulator, or in Tabletopia, um, where it's like a really sort of manual one at a time moving things process. I can do that all from my file management built into my computer, which is awesome. Um, so I'll just quickly go through what all of these folders contain. Fonts, I haven't actually explored this yet, but my understanding is if your game has a lot of text elements, you can bring in custom typography into your game. Um, models are going to be 3D objects. In this case here, um, I am going to be using a custom 3D model for my um, containers, my token bags. So I'll go ahead and take this model from my desktop and just drag that in here. Like I said, I've already made all these assets. I've got everything ready to go. We're just putting them where they need to be. Scripts. Um, this is going to be where your scripting is saved. If you have, if you're using scripting in your packages, um, scripting in uh, Tabletop Playground is done uh, with JavaScript uh, versus Lua or um, you know other other languages. Um, I'm not going to be going over scripting tonight, so I'll skip this. Sounds. This will be you know if you have uh, collision sounds or like audio files that play various points in your game, those will be saved here. Uh, states, this is gonna be where your uh, table states are. I'm gonna come back to that later. This is a really cool feature. Um, templates, uh, templates are the objects themselves. Uh, it's basically gonna create a bunch of JSON files, um, which you can edit from in here. You can open them up in a text editor or your you know, uh, code editor of choice and edit them from in there, or you can use the tools built into Tabletop Playground. Either is fine. Um, and then texture. So this is going to be all of my flat files. So my cards, my boards, my player boards, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you can see I have my textures folder right here. And I have organized all of these because you're going to see later that having all of these things um, in nice, neat and tidy folders uh, really saves you some time uh, moving forward. So I'm just going to drag all those in there. Um, and then uh, thumbnails. This is going to be uh, the little like thumbnail asset that is uh, created within Tabletop Playground. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and then when you upload the game, there will be a thumbnail file that is uh, used for um, the package on mod.io, which is where uh, the games live. Um, so that's like, we are set up and ready to go. So I'm just going to bounce back to the, uh, bounce back to Tabletop Playground. Okay. There we go. Cool. 
All right, so we're back in here. Uh, let's create some objects. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is make a folder because I, like I said, I love keeping things neat and tidy. Um, why did I call it that? <laughs> um, Interesting. All right, so I'm just going to change the name of that. There we go. Meant to say boards. All right, so I've got my boards folder. Uh, let's create some game boards. Um, so we'll go into the create objects, and then you know you see the option here for board. So we'll do this um, and select texture file and I'm going to go into my boards and, and roommates there's sort of a large 18 by 18 inch uh, board that lives in the center of the table and that's this uh, apartment.png file so I'll grab that from here um, and create so here I am this is in the uh, sort of object editing area um, a couple things you'll notice is um, I'm just going to call this apartment. Uh, so I can rename the object up here. Um, and then I can change the size here as well. So um, I'm going to change this. And this is in centimeters by default. Um, so I have a little cheat sheet next to me that has all of my dimensions on here. Um, and I'm just going to I'll make that two millimeters. Um, so here's my big, beautiful board. Um, one thing you'll notice is it's got this like wooden frame around the outside. If you like that, you're welcome to keep it. Um, but if you're like me, that maybe is not what you're looking for. So we can get rid of that. You'll see down here, there's this area that says model. Um, and if we, you know, we can show and hide this here. Uh, but what I want to do is get rid of this one here, this board body. So if I go in here, um, I could change this, right? So I could like change the color of the wood if I wanted to. Um, or change the texture, things like that. Um, I'm just gonna remove it. And now we've got a board. Um, so while we're in here, let's talk about snap points because you apply the snap points when you are actually looking at your object. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna go over to this snap point um, tool over here. Um, a really cool feature in Tabletop Playground is you can create a grid of snap points that all have like, this is especially great if you have like a symmetrical board with like, you know, imagine like a chess board or a go board, something like that. You can create all those snap points with the same snap radius and same turn radius and all of that, like all in a single shot. Um, I don't quite have that, um, and they're not quite evenly spaced, but it is easier for me to just make them all at the same time. So I am going to do that. So I'll create my grid. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row. Excuse me, that's the wrong field. I meant to do that over here. Nine in a row. Um, and one uh, by five. Um, and there's my grid. I'm not sure why it's so small. <laughs> Interesting.
That is surprising. Um, not what I was expecting to happen. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this music down just to sketch. Um, I wonder if they change this. That's all right. We're gonna work with this on the fly. That's actually gonna be real tough for me to work with though. Um, changed in size after I took the... Sorry, folks. Hold, please. You know, when you work live, it's always going to be... So I think what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm just going to do these one at a time because this something seems to be going on with the tool right now. Um, so let's just do them one at a time. So I'll just press this here and click, and you can see that gets placed there. Um, geez, something. I wonder if it's... Um, Something is going on with the snap point tool, and I'm wondering if my computer is angry that I'm doing this and streaming. Um, but I do really want to show this, so we're going to figure out how to make it work. So we're going to change the radius of this. Um, that should be good. Like, 10. Um, And if I, if I just keep going, these will all be 10. They'll all have a radius of 10. Um, and I'm not going to be super precious with this because it is just a demo. Um, oh, shoot. I forgot to turn the rotation on. Ha, ha, ha. There we go. Um, yeah, I'll jump out of that. So you want to make sure to move things around. Um, this little arrow with the plus sign is how you add them. And then when you click the X, this will go back into the tool to move them around. Um, so when I click this one, I can turn that snap point on, or the rotation on. Turn this rotation on. On and on. And now that I have that good to go, um, all the ones I make moving forward should have the rotation. And you can see what the rotation, oh, you can see what the rotation is because there's that little nub that points to, you know, the orientation it'll be. Um, and you can, this is like totally scalable. Um, so you can have it to like down to like the, you know, uh, down to the point, like how uh, how you want to rotate things. Um, geez, something is happening with my mouse and my system. We're gonna work through it. It's gonna be fine. We're having fun. Again, just going, just clicking to put these in here. Um, you could do this with the grid tool. 
um, and then just delete points that you don't need. You know, that's what I did for the um, the real version of this. Um, but this will give you an idea of how this works. Um, and you can actually, for each one of these points, you can see it here that there's a X and Y, X, Y, and Z value for all of these. So you can actually um, not only change by the like, you know, exact location, um, you can change um, uh, you can specifically change where um, these things are living and like in vertical space. So let's say you have a game where, you know, you have a model and it needs to like hold something in its hand. You could put a snap point in the hand and then like create objects that snap to that point. Cool stuff like that. Um, Roger's saying 45 centimeters. Thank you, Roger. That's the problem. <laughs> this is... I wrote these measurements in millimeters. There we go. Look. <laughs> this is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> So you can actually see the, the the snap points. Roger, thank you. Um, I'm glad one of us was paying attention. So um, I've given this a name. We're just going to go ahead and save that and jump back here. And you can see we've got our little apartment here. Um, if I click this, I can move selected objects. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that in my boards folder. Um, I am now going to make the second board for roommates. And this will be much quicker because um, what I can do is actually, we're going to save that for later. Um, I'm going to make the second board. This one will be much faster though, because we're not going to goof on the snap points, except we're not going to goof on the snap points, but we are going to goof on grabbing the wrong image roof. Here we go. That's what we want. Um, again, we'll, uh, you know, go in here and remove that model. Um, and then I will change this to 45.7 um, by 22.9. To the correct dimensions. Um, and then we're going to call this roof. Um, that looks beautiful. Um, apartment achieved. Apartment achieved. <laughs> Almost. Um, I'm going to toss a couple snap points on this. Um, because actually, you know what? No, I'll do it. So in roommates, um, this, there are three uh, large tokens that are thrown on top of here um, that are the bedrooms. So I'll just go ahead and put those there. Um, and those do have snap point orientation. If I was feeling really fussy, I would measure these out, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I've named the file, so I'm just going to go ahead and save. And there's our second board. Um, and I will move that to boards. So we've got our boards done. Um, next up, let's talk about tiles. Um, so I'm going to make a new folder and uh, I'm going to make the bedroom tiles. Uh, so these are the, the tiles that I was talking about that are placed on top of that roof board. Um, so we'll go in, we'll do tile slash token and um, bedrooms, and I'll make the red one first. So here's our um, 
here's our tile. And it actually came in with almost the exact correct measurements. Um, Beautiful. I'm just gonna call this red. Red room. But this one doesn't need any snap points. Um, so you can see here, um, this is a kind of a, a feature that we didn't talk about in the boards, but you can see in this right panel, um, back image type, if you wanna have the back side of this be a different uh, asset. This is where you'll select what the back asset is in this back image type. Front image, this is what we already chose when we created the, the asset. Shape image, this is cool. So we're gonna come back to this tool, but this allows you to like have the, um, the, the texture that you see not necessarily be the same thing as the information that's deciding what the shape of the tile is. I'm probably not explaining that super well. We're going to come back to it. Um, and then here, this is where you can choose um, how you want this object to interact with things. This object doesn't uh, go enhanced, so we can ignore that. I don't want these to be able to stack, so we can get rid of that. Um, we don't need to deal with hidden, like what it looks like when it's hidden because these are never hidden. Um, so we can just go ahead and save that. Um, and now I need two more of these. The game, I didn't mention this, roommates plays from two to five players. I'm just gonna be setting this up for three players so that you're not watching me do the same thing over and over again. Um, just gonna have a look at the chat. So for folks who keep the back, Yes, so Matthew brings up a good point here. Uh, for folks who keep the back of the cards as the front, definitely make sure to double check that mirror back is unchecked. Um, otherwise, it shows the front image in reverse, which isn't quite helpful in a lot of situations. That's absolutely true. Um, we'll see that in action when I uh, do some cards in a little bit, uh, but that's definitely a good point. And um, I, Jay, I missed you. I, I can't believe I missed this comment. Hello, Jay, thanks for joining. Good to see you. Um, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm just going to do um, I'm going to duplicate this. Did they get rid of that? Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to make my yellow one now. And I want it to basically be identical um, aside from the color. So for front image, I'll go in here and I'll choose yellow. Shape image, I might as well just choose yellow again. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then instead of hitting save, I'm gonna hit save as new. And you'll see, there we go, yellow bedroom. I don't have to go through the, like, this is especially tedious if you're you know, we'll see when we get to the player boards where I've got like a lot of specific snap points. I can just like crank these out really quickly. Um, so, do that one more time. Uh, we'll do blue bedroom, blue, blue. And then save as new. Back, and there we go. Wonderful. Um, and I'll go ahead and move that into the bedroom folder just to keep things neat and tidy. All right. Um, let's talk tokens. Let's make some tokens. Um, There are a handful of tokens and roommates. Um, there are four different food types that you use to cook food. So I'll go ahead and make those now. We'll start with dairy because it was 
alphabetically on top. <laughs> and that dairy. And uh, looking at my cheat sheet. These are 1.9. Uh, no snap points on these. Um, one thing I do like to do with these, though, because, because I'm fancy, um, is change the color on the side here. You can change this little ribbon here, um, and I'm going to make it match the the color of um, the color of the token. So if you want to do that. Um, You click use primary color as side color, and now that opens this color wheel here. Um, and you could just you know freestyle it however you want, um, or you can do what I'm doing and look at your referenced text codes that you have in a Google Doc that's opened next to you, um, and look at that. Look how nice that looks. Um, cool, done. So there's our dairy token. Um, seeing a question from Spiel. Um, is there a way you could have created all three tiles at once with the same settings with different images? Um, yes, we are gonna do something similar with a different, uh, with cards. Um, essentially you could have all of these things on a single spreadsheet. Um, but we'll, we'll come back to that with cards. It's a good question. Um, cool. So I've got my beautiful dairy token, um, and we're going to do the same thing, um, that we did with the bedrooms. Let's do vegetables next. Uh, vegetables have zero, five, five. Five, two, eight, color. All right. Oh, and you know what? I want to not allow stacking um, with these. So I'm going to do save as new, and then back, and then jump back into dairy and get rid of that allow stacking. Um, I think in some games you would want to have tokens with stacking turned on. I have found it to be annoying for this game, <laughs> just because of how the tokens interact with different things. It doesn't really work. Um, and before I go too much further, I'm going to create a folder called tokens. Um, and then let's jump back in here. We'll do meat next. And this one has eight, E, five, three, six, three. Grab that neat file. Beautiful. I overwrote the vegetable one. This is the one thing that's a little annoying about this. So, um, you just got to see that in action. So now we're going to go back and uh, make the vegetable ones. And I'm not going to change the color on that because I want to keep things moving. Um, and you've seen how that works. So beautiful. Although, uh, just kidding. It's annoying me. I can't help myself. I'm sorry. Um, zero, five. Five, five, two, eight, boom, done. And then let's do the last one is grain. And for this one, we need six A, six, nine, six, one, boom. Grain, grain. 
say those now. There's our tokens. Um, a thing I like to do um, when I'm making digital mods is I create a folder of stuff that I refer to as player aids, which is a little bit of a misleading um, naming convention because like when you think player aids and you're playing the game, you think the like little cards that kind of walk you through your turn and things. Um, I have decided to call these things for myself player aids, but these are essentially objects that don't come in the box. They are things that I've custom made for the digital playing experience. Um, so um, this is a great place, I think, to put uh, card holders, which are um, tabletop playgrounds way of like simulating your hand. Um, the game comes with a built-in card holder, um, which you can grab from this thing here. Um, so we can go ahead and do that. Um, so, sorry, just kidding. What we're gonna do is copy object from another package. Um, this is the one that's built into the game. I'm gonna grab this one here and copy it. And this is what they look like. Um, they're pretty simple. Um, again, they have this wooden texture on them and you might be looking at that and you're like, that's fine for my game about living in like a 70s basement, but it's not fine for literally any other game. So what we're gonna do is get rid of that and I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that. Um, Again, if we go down to this model panel down here, um, the card holder identifier is the strip that runs around the edge. You do want to keep that because that'll change depending on which player color is like sitting at that hand. Um, so we don't want to touch that. What we do want to touch is this here. So this texture board would diffuse. Um, we're just going to click nothing. And that's already Look at that. Now it looks like something you bought at Crate and Barrel. Um, there's also, you can kind of see there's this normal map on here, which is going to give it this like woody texture. Get that out of here. Nothing. Um, and then this other map here, get it out of here. Now we've just got, look at that. I could eat off of that. I love that. So we're going to keep that and we're going to save it as new. Um, and then this one we can get rid of. So now we have our beautiful custom made card holder. Um, you can use whatever model file you want for this. Um, so if, you, if you're fancy and you know Blender or a 3D modeling tool, you can make your own custom thing and make it by going through the create object file and you know, grab this um, and import it that way. But this is a way you can just sort of like do it yourself. And, you know, same way you can change those. Here, I'll jump in here. Um, we can change the color of this and everything. Um, so if we scroll down, you know, you've got that primary wheel here where, you know, you can mess with all of that as well if you, if you, you could turn this into whatever color you want. But I'm just going to go with this neutral one here. Um, move selected objects, and we're gonna drop that in my player aids folder. What's going on in the chat? Writing down David's... <laughs> it's a Google Crate and Barrel. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's like, um, like you know, home furnishings. <laughs> um, cool. Awesome. So I promise we're actually going to get to putting these things on the table. Uh, it just helps when you make it all first, I think. Um, let's make a bag. Um, so create new object. Uh, by default, Tabletop Playground uses these like pirates like treasure, treasure chests as the container. So these are things you can put tokens in or if you had a game like, you know, Quacks of Quedlinburg where you're dumping a bunch of tokens in a bag and you're shuffling them, pulling them out. Um, instead of like having like a little bag model, the default is this wooden chest. Um, 
I have found a uh, model that resembles a bag. Um, so I'm going to use that instead. So I'll click container, select model file, and there's my bag model. So I'll click OK and create. And look at that. There's my bag. Um, I'm just going to call it bag. Um, and I'm going to give it a texture, which will be 2D bag. There we go. And then that makes it look a little nicer. There's my, my bag. So if you have like a pet, like, you know, if you wanted to make a pattern or something, you could do that. Um, I am going to color code this bag, but I'm going to do that when we put it on the table. So hold tight on that. We can just use that same object and we can color code it on the table. Um, save. Um, and drop that in play rates. Um, let's see. Uh, Roger says, can you have bowls for tokens? Um, yes, you could. Um, I don't know if it would be able to... So there's two ways you could do it. You could have, you could do what I just did and create a container where the model resembled a bowl. What's gonna happen though, is when you put a token or something in the bowl, it's not going to like, look like it's resting in the bowl, like a real, like, you know, like it would in physical space, it'll kind of get sucked into the model as if it was a bag. Um, so you could do that if you want something with the like aesthetic of a bowl um, that acts like a bag. If you want something that looks like a bowl and acts like a bowl, you'll want to import that as a 3D object. Um, good question. Um, Heather's asking, uh, where can others find this bag model? Um, there is a mod.io um, mod for Tabletop Playground. I believe it's called TTS Objects, where someone um, basically took the, the bag and the digital clock objects from Tabletop Simulator. Um, they recreated them in Tabletop Playground. So I just downloaded that, took the assets, saved them on my computer, and then unsubscribed from the, the mod. Uh, but that's where I got that from. Um, cool. Back to business. Um, another important uh, token type I need to make. So let's talk about 3D objects. This is one of the coolest things I think Tabletop Playground can do. And I am so excited to see what people do with this feature because the stuff you can do on the fly using just a flat image file to create a 3D thing is kind of astounding. Like we're about to do something that you would have needed to do in Blender in uh, Tabletop Simulator. So check this out. Um, I am going to make a um, image shape model. Um, and I'm going to go to my tokens and I want to create the, let's start with the red skillet. Um, so you have a couple options here. If you only want to use the shape of the image, you can click this use only image shape. I want to use the shape of the image and I want to use the image that's on it. Um, essentially what we're about to do is create a 3D object with the like texture map on top of it, like on the fly. Um, which like in Blender, you would have to make the object and then like create the like the normal map. I'm not a 3D modeler, so like, you know, don't come after me about the terminology here, but it would be way harder to do than what we're about to do. So check this out. We're gonna create it. There it is. Um, I'm going to rename this red split. 
Um, and I'm going to look at my dimensions here because it is not this chunky in real life. So it's going to be 3.90304 by 2.8. Five point six. Uh, what happened here? Excuse me. I'm going to try that again. Um, watch, I'm going to talk this up and then it's not going to work. Um, that's why. I'm sorry, folks. I was scaling this in the wrong place. We want to do this down here. Um, so this will be 3.90304. Okay. 2.8. That's looking much better. Beautiful. Um, now, that's all well and good. The other thing we want to do here, um, I want to make this so it lies flat. So we'll change that to that rotation to zero. Um, the other thing I want to do, um, is change the rotation on these to the Z rotation to 45 degrees um, because the the way these will land on this, this is like very much a sort of digital adaptation thing. Um, I'm not gonna explain it, but it's important that for this game that it's 45 degrees. Um, so there it is. Um, now, this is a sort of complicated object, right? It's not round, it's not a square. There's all these sort of cutouts and things. I want stuff to be able to nestle in all these like nooks and crannies so that if things collide with it, it's not just gonna treat it like a big cube. Um, so what we're gonna do is up in this panel, this auto-generated collision, we're going to, you know, we could click this um, eyeball, and you'll see that like there's kind of this prism around it where like things will just bounce off. We want to get rid of that. So I'm going to hit this plus sign and I'm going to create the collider from an image shape. Um, and I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to use my red skillet. Um, and I will need to change the angle on that so it's 45. You can see it's created this new collider that's way more accurate for what we're doing. Um, and I'll have to change the scale as well. So this will be 3.9, 3, 4, 5, 2, 8. Uh, it's big, right? So now that is like, that's going to work way better than the thing we had. Um, so we've got our collider set up. If I wanted to, you know, I could do the same thing where I change the, the color on the side of that and then that's down here, right? Um, but I want to keep this moving. So I'm going to save this. Um, and then I'm going to make my yellow one really cool. Before I do, these need a snap point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add a snap point to these. Just plort that right in the middle, but that does not need to be that big. We can shrink that down. That's much better. Uh, and that doesn't need a snap rotation. That'll be fine the way it is. Look at that. We just made a 3D object from a 2D image with a collider and the texture on it, all from Tabletop Playground. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who's excited about this.
but this blew my mind when I when I did it for the first time. Um, what is the meaningful difference between tokens and 3D objects? Um, 3D object can be um, a 3D object can be anything. So like, let's take the example Roger gave where he was like asking about, could we make a bowl? You know, the thing that could hold something. Um, that's not going to have the same properties in, in the context of the game as a token. Like a token is going to have additional fields and like logic applied to it. Like, can it go in your hand? Can it be flipped? Can it like, um, can it be stacked? Can it be shuffled? All that kind of stuff. Um, so that would, I think those are probably going to be your biggest differences is that they're just going to have a slightly different set of parameters. Um, yeah. I think that's the best way I can answer that. Um, can I explain what a collider is? Yeah, so a collider is a file that exists in a 3D package um, that tells the computer where things, where its edges are. So like, here's my pattern. If I was going to make like a collision map for this, it would be all of the parts of the pen where if I hit the pen, um, my hand cannot go through it. Um, if we go back to the example of the skillet, you saw that big sort of square prism around it, a rectangular prism. Using this example here, the collider would end here. So like, I would just be like, I wouldn't be able to touch the pen any closer than where my hand is right now. So it gives the computer a little more information about where, how close things can get to it and where impact will happen. Um, which matters a lot for some games and doesn't matter at all for other things. It matters for roommates. It would totally matter for like, if you made a flicking game or a dexterity game where like, it was really important that things were like interlocking and colliding the way they would on the table. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, again, I am not a 3D modeler. <laughs> so if I'm like, butchering these terms. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, I do care. I care a little bit. I care enough. Uh, let's do this again. We're going to make the yellow ones. Um, the collider, we can change that to yellow if we wanted to, but it actually doesn't matter because they're all the same shape in this example. Um, but it does matter for those, so we'll do that. And save as new. And then we'll do this one more time for our blue skillets. And again, this is going to carry over all of the... Um, Where's my blue skillet? There, there it is. Um, it's going to carry over all the snap points, all of the collision maps. All of that will be copied over. Cool. Um, let's move on. Let's do some player boards. Um, uh, what standards in this game? So I will create a new object, and I'm going to do this as a uh, tile slash token. Um, I could do it as a board, um, but let's do it as a tile slash token. So I'll go into planners, red planner, create. There it is. Um, again, we'll do some changes to the size. Point six nine by two six point zero four. Beautiful. Um, lovely. These don't need to stack or do any of that. Uh, but I do want to put some snap points on here. So. Grab some snap points. Uh, these top ones, again, I'm just gonna kind of 
eyeball this. You could go in and precisely do these, but I'm not gonna do it. Um, top row, these, uh, the cards that get placed in here need to be able to rotate. Um, the ones on the bottom are always gonna be right side up. Um, thanks, Roger. Um, we're, we're gonna have this whole thing up on uh, YouTube and uh, Twitch and it'll be on Facebook. So if you wanna check out the, uh, the end, um, feel free to do so at the end, but have a good night. Thanks for joining. Um, oops, didn't mean to turn that one on. So we'll add this one down here, turn that one on. So these ones I do want to rotate. And then we'll call this red planner. Save it. Just gonna do the same thing. The yellow one, yellow planner. Save as new, and then blue planner. Save as new. Done. Um, oh, and it put them all in the correct folder. Beautiful. Um, cards. Let's make some cards. Um, I'm gonna do create new folder. Let's do make the friends cards. Create new object. So we're gonna do card. Um, yeah, like right, like so fast, so fast. You could just like make that duplicated object crazy quickly. Um, ooh, Heather asks, um, what tool do you use to precisely place snap points? Let me do that. Um, and I'll, sorry, I'll keep your question up while I'm answering that. Um, let's bounce back real quick. So I'll go to the planners. I'll jump into this red planner. Um, if I go to my snap point tool and click the eyeball, I can see them on here now. Um, when I have one of them selected, so you can click one and it'll turn a different color. In this case, it's green. Um, you could see down here in the position bar. This is where I could like, I could change this to like, you know, five, right? Five, uh, negative eight. So I could go by coordinates and I just enter those in there if I want to. Um, so that's how you would do it precisely. So like, you know, you could make, um, you know, I could go in and I could have it all measured out where each of these is like the perfect center and I could do that. And I did for the real version of this, um, but not important for tonight, but that is a good question to, um, uh, to call out how specifically to do this. Um, uh, Jay asks, the shape of the snap points can't be changed um, like uh, to a rectangle. Um, I don't think they can. Um, I don't think they can. Oh, this is a this is a good thing though. Um, this doesn't answer your question, Jay, but like if you, so you could select these by clicking each one. You can also hit this little carrot symbol if you just kind of want to scroll through them that way. That's another way you can do that. Um, the, um, to answer your question though, Jay, I think they are always round. I, d I don't recall seeing any settings to make that snap radius not a sphere. Um, what you can do is when you make the grid, you can make a square grid or you can make a hexagonal grid. Um, so like if you had, you know, imagine like the Catan map, right? Or even like the game you're working on, Jay, Frogs and Rain, um, where you've got that sort of large round, like circular board um, with, you know, the lily pads kind of placed evenly like outwards. That might be an opportunity where the hex grid might help you. Um, 
the shapes are gonna be, they're still gonna be spheres, but the layout of the grid will be in more of a circular hexagonal pattern. Hexagonal slash circular. <laughs> um, yeah, good question. Um, cards, that's what I was gonna do. Let's make some, let's make some friend cards. New object, card. Um, I'm going to go into here and I will click the uh, friends file. This is the, the front of the, the card faces and create. So you can see that um, this kind of answers some of the questions that came up earlier about um, can you make things, um, can you make like repeated objects from uh, the same asset file? The answer is yes. For some things it works better than others. Um, cards are a great and e super easy um, time-saving way to do this. Um, so you can see when I bring in this file, I've got like this kind of sprite sheet of all of these different cards, but this is obviously not what I want this to look like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is name this friends. Um, and then um, the back image, I want the back image to not be the same file. I want it to be a separate file. And I want it to be friends back. There we go. And that's, so there's the front, there's the back. Um, rounded corners, you know, you could do, you could have this be a hexagonal card, you could have them be round cards. Um, you could have the shape of the card be based on the image. So if you have like a really funky shape, like cutout card, you could have the cards be custom shapes, which is like pretty cool. Um, you know, I'm thinking of games like, um, there's a, there's a game that I can't, I'm blanking on the name of, but it has like square cards with like a little indent in them. Um, you could do that in here, but we're just going to do rounded corners. Um, thing to keep an eye on here though, when I change the dimensions of the card or like a deck of cards, I want to change the card dimensions in this right hand column, not the one on the left. The column on the left, that's going to dictate the size of the deck. It's not going to dictate the size per card. So what I want to do is change these dimensions here. Um, I am using a weird card dimension in this game because I um, I print it, uh, I have this set up with the Game Crafter and it's this like, mm -hmm. nine by 8.71 by, that's good. Um, I think it's like US standard or something is what it's called. Um, but it's like a very odd dimension. Uh, I do want these to stack. I do want them to work with card holders. I do want to hide them when they're in a player's hand. When they're in the player's hand um, and they're face up, I want them to be, to everyone else, I want them to sort of see this cool blur texture thing. Um, actually scratch that, you know, I wanted to uh, beat the card back. Let's do card back. Um, and then again, you know, you could change the, the color of the side if you wanted to by doing this. I'm not going to do that. Um, now, let's make some cards. Um, there are 10 columns. So we want on my sprite sheet. There are 10 columns and then there are that's not true. Nine. Oh. Six. Eight. Seven. Seven rows. Seven rows. <laughs> um so I've got, you know, my files set up. Ten uh ten columns, seven rows. 
This is what card number one looks like. And now all I have to do is um, just click this plus sign and it's just gonna I just keep doing this. Oops. There we go. There we go. There's my deck of cards. Oh, geez. And you can see now how the deck got thicker once all of those got added in. Um, but I could just go save and deck of cards. Easy. Um, let's do... There's a different kind of friend card in this game. Um, so I'm actually going to copy this one. And I'm going to make the best friend deck. Front image for this is best friends. And there are there's only eight of these, so we can get rid of all these extras. And you can see because the dimensions were all the same and the you know the cards and image information is all the same. Um, I don't need to change that. So I just remove those ones I don't need. Now the fun thing with these is the um, the backs of these are unique. So for back image, I want it to be a separate file again, but I want to use best friend backs. And uh, The back image type, instead of separate file, why aren't you letting me choose? There we go. It is a separate file indexed like the front. So now it's going to do the same thing. So you need to make sure that the index of, if you have these sort of like individual front and backs, um, you need to make sure that they are in the same order on both sheets. So like card one, the back, the position of card one needs to match the position of card one on the front and the back. As long as that's the same, you can do this and it'll it'll work great. Uh, so we'll do save as new. Um, Jay, good night. Thanks so much for joining. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Um, I think I saved that. Yes, I did. Um, there are more cards in this game, but I think what I'm going to do is move on. There's more cards and more tokens. I think I have created enough to start actually um, putting together the game on the table. Um, so I'm going to go back and we are going to... Uh, Preview package or create start uh, start states, um, and we're going to start with an empty table. Um, you can bring in. Uh, oh, uh, let me hit this question before I go too further in here. Um, when you say the positions have to match for the cart front and back, do you mean in a non-mirrored way? Um, Yes, they are. It, it, they are not mirrored. So um, it'll it'll be like. How can I word this in a way that makes sense? Um, the if you, I'm going to do a drawing. I'm the visual person, so I'm going to do a drawing. So you can see I've got one, two, and three. If this is card one, this is card two, and this is card three, the front of one, two, and three, this needs to be the back of one, two, and three. So like on your sort of sprite sheet file, they need to be in the same position in there. It's not mirrored, it's just like, You can't see me.
Oh, the comment. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll explain that again. So you can see the one, two, and three. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Just hit my arm really hard. Um, so image, This is if this is the front and this is the back, um, this is card number one, this is card number two, and this is card number three for the front. This would need to be card number one, card number two, card number three for the back. So it's not mirrored. It's just like exactly the same on the front sheet and the back sheet. Uh, okay. Um, so when you are making tables, um, you can bring in a custom table object if you want to. Um, I'm just going to go ahead with this glass top table here. I really like this one. It's like super neutral and plain. It's not distracting. Um, this is the only thing that when you're setting up your states, you don't... This is harder to change. I haven't figured out how to change this. Um, so you kind of have to, I don't think you have to commit to this now. I think there is a way to change it. I'm just not sure how to do it. But for now, we're going to go with glass top. This, the environment changes every time you load it up. You can pick a new one. This is like not tied to your mod. Um, one thing I will say about these is the ones that end with 3D in parentheses, um, these are like fully like dynamically lit and have like animated backgrounds and things. These are gonna be way more processor intensive. So if you were playing with people who maybe have like older machines or less powerful computers, I would recommend not using these um, just cause it's gonna be a little tougher on their system. Um, so go with one of these sort of static image ones up here. Um, I I kind of like um, Field, even though it's an odd choice for this game. Um, it feels like the most neutral one. So we have this, you know, we're just playing a board game out in a field. Um, but you can see how this isn't like, you know, causing a lot of rendering. Um, so here's our table. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in my uh, my boards. So if I right click and hit object library, you can see all of my stuff from this package that we made is all in here. It's all organized because I did all of that beforehand, like a professional. And I'll just click this and there's my board. It's scaled, it's ready to go. I don't have to worry about the sizing because I did all of that when I built, built the, uh, the object. So I'll place that here. Um, and then I'll grab this other one and put that there. Um, now, boards are by default uh, what Tabletop Playground refers to as ground objects. Um, a ground object essentially is like, it is spawned in in a locked state, so it can't be picked up and moved around. Um, and your cursor in Tabletop Playground is always oscillating between two states. You've got the normal cursor, which cannot interact with ground objects. You can see when I touch this and move it around, nothing happens. But if I tap G, you can see I'm now in ground mode and I can manipulate these as expected. Um, so I'm now that I'm in ground mode, I'm going to right click this and I can do these coordinates like by the centimeter so I can you know arrange this perfectly. Um, and I'm just gonna throw this one in the middle. Um, and then I'm gonna put this one on top because that's where this one goes in roommates. Uh, so we'll do zero, zero. Um, and we're gonna set this up for a three player game. So slide that down here. Cool. Tap G again to exit ground mode, and now I can't move these around. They're stuck there. Um, cool. Now let's bring in our bedrooms. 
Um, let's do the red one and the yellow one and the blue one. Just like in TTS, if I drag over these, you know, I can pick up multiple things at the same time. Um, cool thing to know. So, um, you remember back when I made the this lower board, the apartment board, I put a snap point on every single one of those dots, right? So there's like um, two more rows of dots here. Tabletop Playground is smart enough to know that when something is stacked on top of a thing with snap points, those snap points on the lower level no longer apply because there's nothing, they're kind of covered by that upper thing. In Tabletop Simulator, this if I was hovering this over here, all those snap points would be trying to tile down. You don't have to worry about that in here. It'll, they're the only snap points that'll ever be active are the ones on the topmost layer, um, which is really helpful, especially for this game. Um, so I've moved those again. I, you know, I could have been more precise with um, with the where I place those, um, but you know what? Let me show you something. I'll pop back into ground mode. Now that I'm in here, I have the game loaded. Let's say, you know, I could, um, you know, save the state, leave, go back into the object editor, and make changes from there. Alternatively, what I can do um, is right click this item, uh, go to edit template. Oh. Hold on, I'm going to move some things first. Hold, please. This is going to be cool. <laughs> Um, it's a little easier to do this if you move stuff out of the way. <clears throat> so, edit template. So I can now, whoa. I can now, it brings up the object editor. So I can now go in here and let's, you know, just for giggles, we can move this over here. And then I can do save, apply to all. I can then bring this back over here where I wanted it. That's pretty good. And now if I bounce out of ground mode. I've got my snap point there. I've got my snap point there. The third one's now over there. So that's a way like, you know, the you can get back into that editor even when you're editing at the table. That's a really important thing to remember that you can do and have access to. Um, let's bring in some more stuff. Object library. Um, how about we bring in a beautiful token bags? Now these I should have made a little bigger. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm going to go into coordinates and I'm going to scale these up a bit. Cool. Um, and then I'm going to hit appearance. And what I was mentioning earlier, I can do this with just one item because the art and the, the, um, the model and the texture on it are the same, but I am going to give it a little bit of a tint for each one of these different token types. Um, <clears throat> so I'll make this one the bag for the meat token. So we'll do 8, E, 5, 3, 6, B. That is an intense color. Um, So I can then right click, copy, right click, paste, um, paste, paste. Um, and I could do that same thing for all of these. You know, I could change the appearance and I'm just gonna wing it because it doesn't actually matter if it's, um, you know, I can make them a player color. I can make it a custom color, whatever I want. They're really dark. Why are they so dark? I 
Ah, that's why. Move this slider all the way up. That's much better. Move this green one. That's nice. Cool. Cool, so there's my token bags. Um, if I select all of them and right click and then hit properties, um, we don't want these to be random. Uh, so this is gonna be where you set the the behavior of the bag. So, you know, if we're playing a game like Quacks of Quedlinburg, I wanna put like five tokens in that bag. And then when I draw one out, I want it to be randomized. I don't wanna pick out the last one I put in. So that would be the random bag. Infinite random is interesting. This is if you, let's say you put in three different types of tokens. So I put in a, a meat, a dairy, and a vegetable token. If I do infinite random, when I pull one out, it'll either be a meat, a vegetable, or a dairy. It'll be one of the three but the number of tokens that are in the bag is infinite. I can infinitely pull out at random one of those three types of tokens. So there's no limit. With random, just straight random, that's going to be, you're randomly pulling from whatever you put in it. There's a finite number of tokens in the bag. Um, the, um, Sorry, Q, um, uh, Q, uh, Q is like um, order, it goes by like first in, first out. So if I put in like meat, dairy, vegetable, and then I pull, meat will be the one that comes out, and then dairy, that vegetable. Um, infinite Q is. Um, yeah, so like the, it, it works the same way, but I could just keep pulling and they'll keep coming out in that order. Um, and then stack is first in, last out. So um, like if I do meat, dairy, vegetable, and then pull, vegetable will be the one that comes out. So you've got a lot of options. I know I just threw a lot at you, but there are some useful tool tips that can help you pick the right bag. Um, for the sake of this game, um, you know, I'm putting the same type of token in all of these, so, you know, we could do random. I just don't want it to be infinite. Um, cool. So we've got the bags. Let's load in the card holders. So again, I'm setting this up for three players, so we'll do one here. <laughs> Precisely place these if I wanted to. Um, you know, by right clicking them and setting the coordinates. Um, what I'm definitely going to want to do though is if I right click and then do um, properties, there's a couple important um, things down here. This one belongs to the blue player. Um, so I'm actually, I want this to be the red player area. So this belongs to the red player. Um, the cards that are hidden in there, um, I want them to show the card back. Um, and then that's actually all I need to do there. So this belongs to the red player. This one. Oh, and I do want to do, yeah, so set as hand. I want to click set as hand here. And I want to give this to the yellow player. Again, I want this to be the card back. Another thing you can do here, I'm actually going to turn this off. This option here, take cards, this makes it so that um, if I was the red player, I couldn't take cards from the yellow player, which might be useful if you're playing with people who don't know each other and you kind of want to keep everybody's space to themselves. Um, for the sake of like 
setting this up. I'm going to turn that off because it can be a little annoying to have that turned on and you're placing things and then like you have to keep changing your player color in order to interact. Um, so I'm going to turn that off here. And then for the last one here, blue, we'll set that as hand. It's the blue player. Card back. Turn that off. Wonderful. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and lock these down just by hovering over them and tapping L. So now those won't move. Um, that's a way that you could turn an object into a ground object. So like I did with those two boards. Um, the, if I switch to ground mode now, I can interact with those card holders because they are now ground objects. Um, they became ground objects when I locked them. Um, so while we're doing, while we're on the topic of player hands, um, one thing to mention about tabletop playground that's a pretty big difference from tabletop simulator is that the, it doesn't really simulate like where your body is sitting at the table in the same way that TTS does. Um, your hands, instead of just sort of being like a space where cards float with a like JPEG of your face, you have this kind of display where your cards are placed. And then if you are the player that owns this space, they'll show up kind of at the bottom of your screen. So players, when they load in, um, will need to choose um, what player color they are. Um, so I can, oops. um, I can click player options right now. You can see that I am the blue player, but if I go down here, I'm now the red player and the yellow player and you can custom choose these colors. Like I can double click this, just kidding. Here we go, session options, player colors. You can go in and you could custom pick these colors if you'd like. Um, I think there's a limit of 16 players you can have at a table at a time. Um, so right now, um, I'm the blue player. So let's bring in some cards and I'll show you what that looks like. Go to the object library. Um, I'll bring in my friends. We'll just put these over here. Um, I'll bring in those best friends as well. Um, so I can pick these up by long, uh, you know, long clicking, um, and then a short click and drag will take from the top of the deck, just like in TTS. Um, I'm rotating by picking up the deck and then hitting a Q and E. Um, and if I'm holding them and I shake the mouse, I can shuffle them that way, um, or I can hover over the deck and click R, and it'll, that little animation means that they're being shuffled. Um, so you can see now, this is the, the deck I had where the cards were, you know, different on each side. The, that number five means that it was, you know, card uh, best friend number five. And if I flip that over, I can see that that number five is in the upper left or upper right. So that means that import worked the way it was supposed to. Um, but let me go ahead and throw some of these cards in here. And you can see, so this is what it looks like to me. You know, I can flip these over. They deal them face down, which is cool. Um, I could flip them up and I can see these now. And then if I go down here, these are the same cards in my hand because I'm the blue player. Now, if I change over to Player options. If I switch to the yellow player, 
you can see now that I lose those cards in the bottom of my screen because I'm not holding those cards anymore. Um, and when I look at the blue player's area, all I see is the card backs. I can't see what they are. Um, now, if I was being a jerk, I could. Oh, actually, even if I go in here and try and flip them over for the blue player, all I'm going to see are the backs. Um, so that's kind of cool. <clears throat> so that gives you a sense of how card backs work, uh, card backs and card holders in um, Tabletop Playground. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, object library. Let's bring in those tokens. Do the meat. So one, two, three, four, and five. I'm just going to bring in five of each. You'll get the idea. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and you know, I can grab all of these and drop them in there. Perspective bags. Um, and now same thing as like drawing from a, a card stack. Uh, long click will pick up the bag. Quick click will draw a token out. And you can see because I just have it set to random, I'll draw the five and then I can't draw anymore. So those are tokens. Um, let me show you my those skillets that I made. So we can kind of see. So you can see how close these are together, right? Because I set up that collision. If I hadn't done that, these would have been like wobbling all over each other. Um, but you can see that I can tuck them in really nice and close to each other, um, just like I would be able to in real life. That's about as you can see. That's where it kind of starts getting a little messed up, but you know, still pretty good um, for something that's like made with a not super precise tool. Um, ooh. Good question. Uh, is it hover over and press L to unlock? Yes, it is. Um, hovering over, um, hovering over a uh, um, any object and hitting L locks it down and converts it into a ground object. And then hovering over it and hitting L on a locked or ground object unlocks it. Um, and then this question here. Uh, why is everything floating above the table? I think I know what you're referring to there. Um, this table, so this is a, one weird thing about this table. I like it because it is um, basic and not distracting, but it does have, you can kind of see, because it is a glass table, um, everything looks like it's floating a little bit because it is like, a clear top on top of a white table. So it kind of looks like everything's floating, but it's actually, um, that's actually just the effect from the table. It doesn't bother me, but, um, you know. Uh, I wonder if you could remove the glass layer for this. I think that's something, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, I'll look into that as well. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Um, do you have to be in ground mode to unlock? No, you do not. You do not have to be in ground mode to lock and unlock. Um, cool. I think I'm up to speed on questions. So you can, you'll can you remember I added a snap point to each of these. So if I grab one of my boot tokens, you can see these will snap to that center circle and I can pick up this object and it will carry both things and I could bring them over to here. Um, now an interesting thing about snap points is it doesn't like to snap two things at a time. Something I've noticed. So if like there are two things here, it doesn't the snap point goes away. If I just have this one it's fine. If I just have the skillet, it's fine. But it doesn't like to have two things that are attached to each other snap to a point below, which isn't a big deal, but just something to keep in mind. 
Um, planners. Let's make some planners. Um, ba -ba -ba. This will be super easy. I've got my red one. Put that down over here. Oops. Got my yellow one. Actually, I need a little more space. Doesn't matter. I'll lock those down as well. Uh, and then I'll make my last one. And we'll lock that down too. So you can see now, you know, I could throw my cards in here. Those will snap. Um, this, These can be, you know, just like I sat, these can be in any orientation, but these ones down here will always snap to be upright. So that's working well. Um, okay. Oh, shoot. You know what I forgot to do? Is uh, I forgot to make a multi state object. So before we leave here, um, hit escape. Oh, no, I will not. No! This is why, this is why you save your work. This is why you save your work. Um, here's what we're gonna do. That's incredible. That is, that is incredible. But here's what, here's what we're gonna do. It's not even that big of a deal because we are going to, I'm gonna have my little like, well first, let's go back. Let's, let's go back and we're gonna make that multi-state object real quick. Um, so in roommates, there are, this is what the planner looks like. And there's these little, um, dials that change that are attached um, and I'm going to recreate those with a multi-state object so I'll click that and then do uh, where did I save that yeah boost is the file I'm using for that um, so you can see it looks a little messed up um which is fine uh because what we're gonna do is uh i'm kind of gonna treat this like a sprite sheet like the same thing i did with um the uh the the cards um So I want that, and then that's my front image, my shape image. Uh, I made a separate one, which is like, I made a separate file just called Boo Shape. That's gonna be this, you know, prism, you know, trapezoid shape. Um, there is, there are three columns and one, uh, one row and I need to change the um, dimensions of this. So three, 5.2. Oh, it's locked. Great. Beautiful. There it is. Um, now, multi-state object, this is gonna work similarly to the cards where you know I can make this 
I just hit this plus sign and we'll add the additional states. Um, key thing to know about multi-state objects. Um, I'm actually going to save this. Um, I'm gonna Ah, that's why. Okay. Okay. So, pretend there's a game here. Um, I throw my multi-state object in. If I, I hover over this and press, you know, a number, it'll change to the next state. So if I press one, um, now you'll notice it's not, what I want to happen is I press one and it'll go to the number one and press two and it'll go to the number two. A multi-state object considers there to be a like zero state. So if I hit zero, that's when I'll see one. So what I need to do, if it matters for your game where like you have where it's like really important for me to hit one and I see a thing that makes sense for that, you need to add sort of like a, a zero state. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go to edit template and I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna add a state that's in this first position. So now when I hit one, I see one. When I hit two, I see two. When I hit three, I see three. Um, so you just gotta keep that in mind that like the the numbers you're at you're basically adding one to everything because there's that zero state that exists. Um, I really wish I didn't delete the entire game, but it's fine. Um, the, cause what we're gonna do is boot up. I'm gonna have, this is like my Julia Child moment where I'm gonna say, here's one that I worked on earlier. Um, right? Just like Food Network. <laughs> Um, so you can see there's a whole bunch of tokens and tiles and things that we didn't cover. I just wanted to get through this quickly, cover the things that you needed to know. Um, but you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff here that I've made for this game. Um, so this is the setup for a um, five player game. What I'm gonna do is make a state for a four-player game, uh, which this is great because this was the thing I was going to do anyway. So, um, what I'm not going to do is exit, jump back in. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just pull this like teal player down here and just delete all of these components. So all of this. Ooh, one more important thing about multi-state objects. You cannot change them if they're locked down. This is a thing that I have. I put in a request with the uh, Tabletop Playground team to add an option to toggle this on or off. But if I lock down this tab, I can't. I'm like hitting the numbers. It's like stuck on whatever state it is whatever state it's in, which is a little annoying for this game that these can be like freely moved around, but um, potato, potato. Um, I also annoyingly have this set up right now so that um, 
you can only interact with uh, your own cards. So get rid of all of these. I will press. This, 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 and this. So now we have all the components out that we need for a four-player game. Um, ooh, one thing I want to do real quick before I do anything else. Because this game does have a little bit of a of set up differences between the different player counts. Um, I'm going to slide this down. And then I'm gonna lock it. Where did the snap points go? Hmm. Oh, it's because of the cookies are on top. This is the thing I was saying that it can't. So yeah, we'll lock that. Snap points are turned off if something is on top of the item you're trying to snap. So if I take those off now, there we go. Now those are working. Great. Lock, 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 lock. And then do one, two, three. Actually, that should have four. One, two, Three, one, two, three, and then this last one just gets two. All right, so that's the setup for a four-player game. Um, and what I could do is save state. I did this in the wrong order. I did this in the wrong order. I'm going to... I'm going to exit. Shoot. Sorry about that. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, so if you wanted to do what I thought I was doing there, um, if I had hit save state there, it would have overridden my five player setup, which is not what I wanted to do. Um, what I want to do here is create a new state that's based on that one and then edit the new one. So I'm actually going to hop out of tabletop playground. And I'm going to show you my screen. Hopefully you can see this. So in here, if we go to my roommate's package, and then states, you can see my five player state here. I'm just gonna copy and paste that. Oop, copy from the end. And I'm gonna do four players. And now, if I jump back into Tabletop Playground,
Ah, crap. You didn't see the screen, did you, when I was doing that? That's all right. Here we go. Okay. So I was in that states folder where my package is. And I just duplicated the five players and copy and pasted it and then renamed it four players. That's all I did. Um, Uh, oops, sorry, I am a little bit behind on the chat. Would it help if those were in ground mode as opposed to locking? Um, so, unfortunately, no, because ground mode is effectively the same thing as locking. When you lock something, it puts it in ground mode. Um, so there is no solution for um, manipulating a um, multi-state object. Um, currently. Um, cool. So now if we go into load game, there we go. We've got the four player table there. I'm going to jump in there, field, and now I can make all of these changes. Um, and I'm going to try and do this quickly. it i've noticed it will put things in ground mode that you didn't realize you had selected and i can't tell if it's me or a bug um oh you can't god all right so all you missed was um All you missed was me removing the stuff from TTP. Um, so it was basically just doing all the stuff that I did before. So yeah, we're all set for our four player thing. I might tweak this a little bit later, but I could go into um, save state. Hilariously, I was wrong. I didn't need to do the thing where I copied the file. It's fine that I did, and it actually maybe created a little bit of a uh, fail safe, but you could name it something new and then save it as a new thing. Um, so, you know, the more you know, I did admittedly um, did not test this part as much as everything else I did, um, which some of you might be watching this and saying, you tested any of this? I did, I actually tried really hard. Um, there we go. So, um, so that is a four player setup. Um, so if we, this is really cool because if you go to, if we exit this and we're just at the, you know, our standard thing, um, I could start a game and I'm just gonna call it room and I'm gonna give it a, a uh, uh, so let's just do that um, I'll load a game roommates um, a thing that you wouldn't be able to do 
as easily in Tabletop Simulator is these multiple game states. Like you could do like all kinds of scripting stuff where you press a button and it just spawns in for the correct player count. But you can just build that all into the package. So if you have these like setups that require things being on different parts of the table, things like that, um, it's really helpful to save these different save states because when other people download this package, we just choose which one we want to boot up. I could do four players in the Milky Way and I get that four player setup. And then on the fly, if you know someone hangs me and they're like, hey, actually I can play, I can go to um, load state, five players, and now we're playing a five player game. Something's glitching out, there we go. Um, so that, like, it's super easy to change that on the fly. And obviously what I'd like to do is like, you know, make the corresponding setup for all the different player counts. Um, but it's a really, really useful way to like get people into the game super fast. The last thing I want to show um, is uh, uploading this. So, uh, we've got our state saved and everything. So we exit and we go to the editor and I go to my, my mod, my package, and I'm gonna hit upload package. Um, and in here, you're gonna, you, the one tricky thing with this is all of these fields need to be filled in. Um, it, and it won't tell you <laughs> that they need to all be filled in. Um, there's no like tooltip on that. So you need to give your, your package a name. You need to give it a summary. Um, the thing that says logo is essentially just what this like thumbnail image is. Um, uh, I have turned allow copying off. This will allow people to like, who subscribe to your package, they can like take assets out of it and duplicate them and put them in their own games. Um, I've turned that off. Um, if you are doing this to play test games, um, and these are things that you don't want to be publicly available, you'll want to make sure you have this checked to private. Um, version, this seems to at this point just be an arbitrary number. Um, if you are keeping track of the versioning of your game, you'll want to update this, but you actually like, you could put whatever you want in here and it seems to not matter. Um, change notes is the only field that I believe you can leave blank. Um, and then what we'll do is hit update. Um, you have to be logged into mod.io when you do this though. And you have to be logged in before, um, I'm going to take a step back because there's a really important thing about this. When you start the game, you'll have this mod.io panel in the upper left corner. Um, if you haven't created a mod.io account, you'll need to do that before syncing anything there. And when you do make that account, make sure you attach your Steam username to your mod.io account. Some initial testing um, that was brought to my attention by uh, the fantastic people at Break My Game is that if you do not have your mod.io account attached to your Steam username, um, it causes some problems when you when other people are playing packages that you have created. Um, so everybody should do that when they when they set up their mod.io account sync it to your Steam name. Um, eventually in the future, the, the developers have said that, you know, one of the reasons why they went with mod.io versus using Steam Workshop is because it will give them the flexibility to bring Tabletop Playground to different platforms or different storefronts. Um, I know so far they've mentioned they want to bring it to the Microsoft Store. They're thinking about the Epic Store as well. This will mean that you're, it's not tied to your Steam account in the same way. So this restriction and quirk may go away once that rolls out uh, and when they start selling it on, on different platforms. 
Um, but it is cool that no matter where you are playing, what platform you're playing on, all of your stuff will carry with you because it'll be attached to your mod.io account. Um, very cool stuff. I'm not going to actually upload this now. You just hit that upload button and it goes and it, it does the thing. Um, I want to do a little more work on that before I do it. If it was the dummy, like fake one, then I would have gone ahead and do it, done it. But since this is the actual like live version of my game, I'm not going to hit upload on it. But I am going to bounce back and have a look at questions and see what's going on. Um, Ah, okay, so Matthew uh, gave a little bit of um, information on this. Um, there is apparently a little bit of a tooltip when you're in that upload screen um, that it will tell you what you need to fill out if, um, if, if something's not there. Um, that's great. I did not realize that that was there. Um, cool. I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Um, so I think what I'll do now, we are at two hours, which is pretty good. Um, if anyone who's here has questions, I'm happy to answer your questions. Um, if not, then, um, I think we could maybe call it a night. Um, so last call on questions. Hopefully I covered um, covered all the good stuff. I think, you know, let's we could hop into the editor and see. I didn't cover dice. You know, that's a that's a thing that you know you feasibly um, might want to have in your game. Um, so dice. You know when you when you make your when you make your die you're gonna choose how many faces are on it so you know it goes from d4 to d20 so let's let's say we maybe want to make a d12 um your your dice texture file is gonna be like a map of all the faces of the dice i never actually used this feature in tabletop simulator but i think you could use those same dice files if you were coming over from that tool um I think you could use those same files and they should map the same way. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any to show you to test that out, but um, it's not, the tools once you're in that editor are not too dissimilar from um, all of the, the control panels and things that we just looked at. Um, Oh, see, now this is interesting. There was a question. About tables. Can we get rid of that glass top? So I've copied the table over, and I bet we can. Wood top, split, so legs, glass top. So if I just click this, Can I just do that? Or I think that's just hiding it. Here's to this glass top just to... yes so yes you can all of this question here um yes so all of the things that are baked into 
tabletop playground, like all of the, you know, standard dice, the checker pieces, the go stones, like all of that kind of stuff, all the tables, you can copy that and bring it over into your game and you could just like spawn tables all over the floor if you want. Um, or spawn them as like little mini objects. Um, yeah, there, it, it, it can be treated as, as an object um, or as a table. Um, and yeah, you can make all sorts of changes and edits to it as we're seeing right now. Um, the, and that's kind of like what I did with the, uh, the card holder. If you remember, like just kind of removing that wooden texture, I just grabbed it from the files and started making changes to it. Um, now, I wish, see, why can't I just get rid of it? What? Okay, so those are the legs. That's that part. That's that part. So if I... <sighs> That's so annoying. It won't let me get rid of that. Like, this one's locked in place. This might be a, a, an activity for another time. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. If you're watching this, then you could probably see where my frustration is landing right now because here's what we're going to do. Okay. Okay, so I'm in my demo game. Oh, that's an intro. Could I scale the glass to zero? No. One is, one is as small as it goes. Here's what I'm going to do, though. I think we don't have to, because I'm going to, and I'm going to do this right this time. OK. I'm going to go to my. Demo game, templates, glass top, we're going to mess with the JSON file. I feel a little bad because I'm sure some 3D artist spent a lot of time on this. Like, it is a nice looking table. So I think what I could do is probably just delete the part that's the glass top, right? Yeah, like I think I can just that. 
save. And now, if I... Jump back into Tabletop Playground. This is gonna blow my mind if it worked. It did not. <laughs> oh, it was too good to be true. Oh, no, it did. It did. It just didn't. It just didn't update. Friends, friends, we have made a glassless table. Did I really not stream it again? Are you? Do I need to go back and, and redo the editing, the JSON file? Did you not see any of that? Did I really not stream any of that? I could scream. Um, what I'll do, because I beefed that up, um, what I will do is save this beautiful table <laughs> and um, I will, we'll make this, we'll make this, um, table available for anyone who wants it. Okay, you want to see the JSON, okay, okay. Everybody wants to see the JSON file. Uh, so, we'll, we'll just start it over. I have to start it over because I deleted stuff. Uh, so we'll go from general, we're going to copy our table, save as new. I'm just going to get rid of all these. I've got so many tables in here now. Um, okay, so we have our beautiful glass table. I'm going to... Okay, so you can see this, right? <sighs> okay. This is gonna be incredible for everybody who watches it after the fact. Um, So I'm in demo game. Oh, come on. Demo game. Um, templates. Here it is. I don't know why it's got a funky name, but um, I'm just going to open it in a text editor instead of Adam. OK, so here's our JSON file. I don't know how readable this is going to be. Um, that might be a little better. OK, so we're going to find the line in the file that is the glass top, or the, the section that is the part of the model that is the, the glass top, um, which is this section here. I could try and zoom in even more. But I don't think that's going to help. Yeah, now it's too big. That's as big as I can go. Um, and all I did was just delete all of this and then save the file. Um, so that when I go back into the mod in
Now if we jump back into Tabletop Playground, we've got our little guy. Oops. There it is. No glass. Um, thank you, Matthew. Have a good night. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's how to that's how to edit stuff that's already in the game. So that's just a plain white table. Um, and if I bring that. So, you know, we can start with our custom table. There it is. And if I put stuff on it now, that will now lie flush on the table. I think I just have this object thinner than it should be, but um, yeah. So that do it doesn't look like it has that shadow underneath it anymore. Um, yeah, there we go. You can see it a little better there. That's lying flush on the table. So yeah, you can edit the objects that are built into the game. Um, but you may need to do a little bit of basic coding to make that happen. Um, cool. So with that, I think that's that's going to pretty much cover it. Um, Oh, not to draw things out, but I did have a question about uh, shaped cards. Yes. What question? What was your question about shaped cards? Uh, could you use the card object type with the weird shapes and make them thicker so that they would basically be tiles? Um, yeah. Yeah, you could. Um, the problem is going to be that they're going to have the same attributes as a card. Um, you can change the thickness of the cards, but the, the attributes of the object are going to be different. So, like, it's not going to behave like an object. It's going to behave as if it was a card, which may not matter for some things. Um, but it's going to want to do all kinds of stuff with, like, flipping and hiding and hands and, like, stacking and things like that. Um, so that might get weird. And the way it interacts with different things could get weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could technically do it. Um, but you could also just make a stack of tiles, you know? Um, so there's a couple ways you could do that. Um, yeah, I wish I had some files that we could test that with right now, but... Um, I don't have any of that stuff currently set up. Uh, OK. I think that's all I've got. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, we will, uh, there'll be, these will be available, um, or the stream will be available on uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and um, Twitch for a certain number of days. I think it's 30 days and then they take it down. Um, but on the, uh, the uh, Protospiel Online uh, YouTube page um, or YouTube channel, um, Facebook channel, um, and the Twitch channel for a limited time, 
Um, thank you for everyone who joined and asked questions. I hope it was useful um, and stay tuned for more of these in the future um, and have a lovely rest of your night.